So what's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Unfortunately, my trailer has a slow leak and I figured I'd take this time to kind of show you some things that I have. I have a Vi Air and I have something else I have never used before. I bought it for my fifth wheel and I've been the fortunate guy to never get a flat tire on my fifth wheel. I've driven that thing like 10,000 miles. No flat tires on the same cheap old tires. Waiting for them to blow up. They have not blown up yet, but as you guys can see, this trailer has what's called Rainier tires. So I'm gonna show you guys a few things you should have in your uh, toolbox because if you do get a flat tire, things can get pretty bad. As you guys know, if these tires blow out, it could take out half of your siding on your trailer. So you wanna keep your PSIs high and you wanna check your tires for any kind of damage, anything like that. So let's go ahead and get into the video and I'll show you the first thing you should definitely have. <sighs> As you guys can see, I have a ton of stuff in my trailer now. I'm gonna get rid of most of it, but the very first thing you should have, and it's gonna kinda of look like this. Let's see if I can find it. I should have been more prepared. I'm so sorry, here, here it is. So pretend like this is a, a torque wrench. I have this only because I lent my torque wrench to someone I cannot remember who I lent it to. Hence why I do not lend my tools out because of it. If you ever get a flat tire, you have to torque these wheels to a certain specification. So you probably wanna have something a little bit better than this. This is cheap. You should still have one of these just in case, but I do have a spare tire. It was an option for this trailer. What I've noticed is I've put air in this tire twice now, and just within a day, the tire's already kinda of low again. So we're gonna check the PSIs. The next thing you're gonna wanna have is obviously an air pump. Now this is gonna be a Vi Air. So this specific one is the one you're gonna want for these types of tires and these types of tires. So if you have an RV and you need to crank your tires up to 110 PSI, you're gonna to wanna to do your research on what kind of air pump you should definitely have. Now this does run off a 12 volt, okay? So this model number for this one is gonna be a 400 PRV. So the reason why I like this one is it does cycle off when you're not you know, adding air to your tire, okay? So if you have the Vi Air that does not turn off, as soon as you get to two and three tires on the RV, it's going to cut off and you have to wait like 20 or 30 minutes for it to basically go through a cycle. So I strongly recommend getting this one if you're planning on airing up a lot of PSIs on your trailers and on your truck tires. Because they do take, you know, 80 on the truck typically, 65 to 80 on your trailer, up to 110 for the tires on your trailer too. And if you have a dually, depending on if you have a 450 or something, you might have, you know, 110 PSI on your tr truck tires too. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to hook this thing up. This is really easy. All you have to do is just connect it to your battery on your truck. I'm gonna use my trailer battery since it's, it's closer and we're gonna see where the PSI's are. Now I did max these out to 65, which is what the tire requires on cold. So I'm gonna see how much air is in there now. One last thing I wanna mention though. This is what came with the Vi Air. You're gonna upgrade all this stuff. This is gonna get old and the hoses are gonna have issues. Like one of my hoses start leaking within a year. So I did upgrade this from Lowe's. Um, I think I paid $17 for a kit. I got this off of Amazon and it shows a digital readout. This is so much easier to use. It also is easier to click on there too with this thing here, this little guy. See right there, you can just click it onto there very easily. Whereas on this one, you have to hold it. And so this is so much easier to use and it's built better too. All right, so this isn't rocket science. All you have to do is just put the red on positive to the red side and then on the negative side on the ground, easy stuff. I did undo my hose because I don't like when they get all tangled up. This is the original hose that came with my Vi Air. They give you two of these. So this one has a female in like this. Let me just show it to you, just like this. Now, as you guys can see, it says, do not pull here. It says, you know, so you can kind of see that you have to push it in in order for it to connect here. So I'm gonna go ahead and hook all this up and I'll show you guys how this digital uh, readout works. The on button's right here. You guys can hear it cycling and then it turns off all right and that's what you want so let's go ahead and hook this up to the tire 
I gotta get someone to clean this trailer for me. I have too many toys and cars and crap, so I just get tired. I'm not doing all this cleaning myself, so I have to hire someone, unfortunately. But all I gotta do is just put it on like that, and that's it. And then the readout comes on automatically, as you can see. So I'm at 37 PSI. So I love this one so much better. Look at that. It shows you every step of the way where it's at. And if you let off on the trigger, it'll show you what PSI you're at. So I'm going to put, there's a few more PSI's in here. I'm not going to fill it up because I'm going to take it to a place and have them um, inspect the tire for a possible puncture. But um, like I said, the next thing I'm going to show you guys is how to get this tire off if you're on the side of the road. This is probably the most important part of this video. And this is something you definitely want to have for your trailer. So I'm at 47 PSI. I had it at 65 originally. So as you guys can see, it dropped quite a bit within a, about a day's time. So let's go ahead and take this tire off. And let me show you what you're going to need in order to do that. One thing you'll learn when you have trailers is that when it comes down to changing the tire, you want something that's going to be effective and quick. And the trailer aid through Camco is something that you're going to definitely want. Because if you do get a flat tire, you do not want to be lifting this trailer up on the side of the road. You want to be able to get this tire in the air, replaced, and then you want to go ahead and put your spare tire on and keep going. And then when you get to your next destination, you'll be able to get it fixed. By the way, I literally just found where my tire is leaking from. You see that? There's a stinking nail right here. Isn't that funny? I just noticed that. That is so funny. So now I know where the nail is. I can show them. It'll be quick. They'll find it on their own. That's not hard to find. But what we have to do is we basically have to drive this tire up onto this ramp and it'll lift this tire off the ground. Now, if you want to get one of these, I think there's two options. I bought this years ago, but there's an option without this little rubber piece here. This is going to give you extra lift. So depending on what type of trailer you have, you're probably going to need this. Now, as you guys can see, my trailer sits pretty low. Let's see. So here we go. So I can actually get this up on the, the ramp pretty easily. You may have to have two people helping you because this ground is kind of cold. So I'm having this doubt in my head that this might not work as easy as I want it to, but hopefully we can make it work by ourselves. If not, my wife's down the street. She says she'll come help me if I need it. So we'll just do it by ourselves now and then if we need to, we'll call her. I slightly loosen the lug nuts, not a lot, just enough to where when I take it off the ground, the wheel doesn't spin when I try to loosen them. So just untighten them ever so slightly, not too much though. And next thing we gotta do is we have to drive up on this ramp. Here we go. <sighs> I'm gonna let this window down so we can hear what is going on. Can I see that? Here we go. ground is kind of unlevel. I wanted to see if you could see it lift it. Let's go ahead and take a look at what's going on back here. All right, so you can see that it did go up on the ramp, but I'm still unfortunately on the ground. So I can probably come back maybe a few more inches, not much, and then that should lift up the trailer. So what I want to do though, I got to take my car out of the trailer anyways. So I'm going to do that right now, just because I don't like that much stress on my axles on my trailer. So I'm going to pull it back off. I'm going to pull my charger out and then we'll go from there. Okay. I haven't had a chance to do a review on these ramps. These are the second set that I bought. I returned the other ones. I made a big mistake buying the first ones. I thought they would work, but my car sits really low. These ramps are a little bit longer. I think these are 93 inches. I'll show you these in the next video and just give you a comparison to the ones I bought compared to these. 
But as you guys can see, all I gotta do now is drive the car out. So I do have a skate door here. So I can climb in. But you know what? I am so dumb. Let me tell you why I'm dumb. I drove here with my car without the key. So I guess I have to get my wife to come here anyways, right? So let me give her a call and then we'll go ahead and get this car out of the trailer. Yeah, put your foot here, like hold it like that with your foot. Can you see you do it? Or do you want to back it up? It's not hard, how about you back it up? You just can't go fast, you just have to kind of... No, you ease. do it. You want me to do it? All right, guys, so as you can see, it lifted it probably about three and a half inches off the ground. So when I took my car out, obviously that weight helped it to get up this ramp. The second time, however, without the car in there, it wouldn't really lift up. So I had to put my uh, chalk back here and that actually did the trick. So if you need to do it by yourself, just use one of your chalks and it won't move. But I'm gonna go ahead and take the tire off. We're gonna get this bad boy plugged you can see the nail is right here. So let's go ahead and get to it. I got the tire repaired, put back on the RV. Everything worked out perfectly and I'm back on the road. So I wanted to go over some of the products that I have here. So the first thing that I want to go over is this Trailer Aid by Camco. This is going to be the plus. I cannot remember what I paid for this back in the day, but I don't think it was this expensive. So maybe they've gone up a little bit in price. But this does give you five and a half inches of lift. It can hold up to 15,000 pounds. So this is pretty robust plastic. And if you do not get the plus, the trailer aid standard only gives you four and a half inch lift, um, but it's only a few dollars less. So I just recommend going with this one, just in my opinion. Now this does not work with just single axle trailers. Just, you have to have at least a tandem axle. That way you can lift one of the axles up on that side so just keep that in mind a few guys asked me about this digital readout this is a astro ai digital tire inflator i strongly recommend this this has been a huge help i like that they give you a digital readout and it shows you the psi's to the exact and so when you're going to fill up your tires in your high performance car or in your trailer you can get it precisely to where you need it to be at it does come with a few other pieces here too um, this is only 25 bucks and let me just show you what's included in the package so right down below this is everything that comes in that package there the next thing that you should definitely have if you do have an rv or trailer is this by air pump the ford prv does cycle on and off and the reason why that's a good feature is because when you're checking tire pressure or you're airing up each tire individually you don't want to have to keep turning the compressor on and off and if you don't turn it off what happens is it has to cycle for a short period of time, like 20 minutes typically. And then you have to wait for it to like basically turn back on. So I strongly recommend having one that cycles off. It makes life a lot easier. It ain't cheap though, it's 300 bucks. So yeah, if you want one of these things, you're gonna pay for it. But like I said, it's lightweight, compact, and it's just easy to use. Last but not least, you definitely wanna have a quality torque wrench. Now, I cannot remember which model I had. I bought mine like five years ago in the comment section. 
what kind of torque wrench do you have and which one do you recommend i'm probably going to buy one in the future when i bought mine i feel like the price was like a hundred bucks i think i got it from lowe's and these prices just seem i don't know maybe these aren't torque wrenches but yeah this one definitely is here but i remember paying like over a hundred bucks for mine so I, maybe there's a difference and i'm missing here because i don't remember the research i did back then but yeah in the comment section let me know what you guys use but on that note Thank you guys so much for watching this video and supporting this channel. Be sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you soon.